I know I've been gone for a minute. I'm not gonna front with you. Like I'm not embarrassed, okay? I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, if I'm gonna level with y'all, um, I, the next video I wanted to post was a taming decode and nothing else. Um, and each time I would get around to decoding it, um, I would just start to cry. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, just because the symbolism is just so heavy with him and he is like my ultimate bias. Um, yeah. Uh, so I will be going into some photos and we're going to review his uh, last couple of comebacks together. And we're just gonna kind of, I just want to show y'all kind of the psychology of a, um, a, a industry slave and kind of where their minds are at so that hopefully you can understand Tamian a little bit more. Um, so just to clarify, if anyone is new to my channel, this is an Illuminati Satanism, you know, decoding channel. Um, people that are fans of my channel are red pilled. So if you, um, if you still think that the music industry is not drenched in symbolism and that there isn't a lot of occult uh, goings on happening, then this is not the channel for you. So go ahead and exit. You know, you don't have to watch something that you know you're already going to agree with. If you're asleep and you're a sheep, then uh, that's completely your right. Um, but if you're going to be a sheep, do it on your own time. <laughs> I don't know, do it somewhere else. Like I'm, I don't, I might be sounding yachty or whatever, but uh, you know, I, I get really, I get really tired of people commenting on my videos, uh, people talking about stuff that's going on in my videos um, and they're not red pills and they try to argue with me. Um, I'm not, I'm not really coming at you with arguments, y'all. I'm coming at you with facts and the truth and no matter how that makes you feel or how uncomfortable it makes you feel, that's really your, um, something that you have to deal with. That's not really not my problem. Uh, so I don't shoot the messenger. Don't get mad at me because I'm telling you what's actually going on, okay? And the thing is, you know, this information just strikes something in people's spirit and they want to get angry because, and like in their spirit, they know something is wrong and they don't really like being approached with that. Um, and it makes them really uncomfortable. So if you're one of those people, I recommend you just exit off the channel. I'm already going to get on your nerves. No point in watching this video. But I know y'all are gonna do it anyway. I know y'all are gonna do it anyways. Like I know people are going to do it anyways. Whatever, I don't really care. Whatever. Uh, so that being said, I always, like to, I always like to set that aside because some people just don't understand what my channel is about. But you know, let's get into it. So I have a couple of photos from Taman's last couple of comebacks. Um, and we're just going to go over the symbolism. Y'all, I got a new iPad. I'm sorry, but that's just such a sir. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna re put, press record. Three, two, one. Alrighty. Okay, uh, so um, I'm really bad at keeping track of what's a what comeback picture is from what comeback, so. I'm just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna roll with it, okay? Uh, so this is, Tamien, so this is just your classic uh, one-eye symbolism right here. Like you see how it's just like covered up right there. Yeah, that's just, you know, pretty straightforward, pretty clear, you know, doesn't get any more straightforward than that. Oh, see, look, I could do little colors and stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> She's so tech savvy. Okay, refocusing. Um, so then we have our Illuminati symbolism once again. Uh, our one eye symbolism here. Okay, now if we look kind of at these tattoos, um, you know, this tattoo says lost. I wonder if that is allusion to his 
um, MK Ultra programming, how he's lost, you know, uh, I don't know. Um, but tattoos and branding and stuff like that always kind of strikes me as something that's a little bit off. Like it's kind of like, cause they brand slaves, you know what I'm saying? So when I see tattoos and stuff like that, um, it is a little bit alarming. You know, we have the, the black and white symbolism here and here. Uh, pretty pretty basic stuff. I've gone over this in my other videos. Just so y'all know, the black and white symbolism is um, Freemasonry. Uh, it's just the Freemasonry symbolism. It represents the black and white tiles in the Freemason lodges. Uh, duality, as above, so below, stuff like that. Um, so it just represent, re represents the occult. Kind of like, you know, these dual colors represent how you can appear to the public, but behind closed doors, you are a completely different person. And that's the case for a lot of these celebrities, okay? We have one eye symbolism again, um, you know, and the, the rose as well on his lapel, that rose right there, that's also something else to know. Uh, one eye symbolism again, and then we have the black and white duality once again okay um i scream i don't know you guys when i see stuff like scream and uh words like that for these things they kind of like it does remind me of mk ultra like them like he was screaming while he was under mk ultra like he's being tortured uh you know one eye symbolism once again um, yeah, Taemin is just, this boy is going through it, one eye symbolism. So we see both of his eyes here, right? But only one eye is like bejeweled like that. So yeah, that is one eye symbolism. Um, and then here we have a double whammy. We have both one eye symbolism and we have a couple of things going on let me break it down so we have this one eye symbolism here with his eye we have like the jewels coming through here and um his other eye is covered up by the glare and the light um and then what was very interesting was we have this crown now this crown reminds me of a couple things it it's a crown made of horns reminds me of the baphomet horns um the Satanists, they worship the Baphomet, okay? So this reminds me of the Baphomet horns. It also reminds me of um, Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for our sins. Um, and he had his, his uh, that crown of thorns. Uh, this does look a lot like that crown of thorns, but like kind of like a crown of thorns made of the Baphomet horns. But it's definitely a mockery of Jesus Christ. Um, and it's also a crown. What we're seeing with Taemin is Taemin is the prince of K-pop right now. He really is kind of, I don't know how to describe what he is really like the, like, he is that kid, you know? He's always been that guy. He's gonna always be that guy. He is very much, um, you know, he is the, he's K-pop's guy. <laughs> like, I don't know how to describe it, but he's definitely a prince. Um, he's definitely like royalty level, so to speak. Like he's K-pop royalty. Uh, three generations of K-pop and everything. Uh, we have the one eye symbolism once again. You know, it's just so blatant. I don't know. <laughs> it's so it's so extremely obvious. I don't know how people aren't seeing it at this point. Um, and then here we have him in a box. And again, we have that black and white symbolism that has just prevailed through so much of his um, of his teasers. And we also, if you look back here, we have cameras, okay? You know, these idols, they're always being watched. Um, they're under surveillance 24 seven. Nothing happens that their handlers don't know about. Um, especially your MK Ultra handlers, they're going to always know what's going on with you. So this is, you know, and he's trapped in a glass cage. You know, he is a slave and he's trying to tell y'all he is, he is, and his handlers, him and his handlers are signaling to the public that he is a K-pop pawn. Um, 
you know, more symbolism once again. You know, they thought they were pretty smart with this little jewel eye, whatever thing going on here. Um, and the box symbolism once again. And so this was interesting and I wanna talk about this. So red is their sacrificial color. The colors you wanna look out for when it comes to uh, Satanism is white and black. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry if I hit that, oh my gosh. You wanna look for white and black. Red is the sacrificial color and purple is the color of royalty. So if you see um, black and white and red, that means, you know, that represents and signifies a ritual going on. Uh, you know, red for blood sacrifice, stuff like that. And they're usually sacrificing on the Masonic tile, on the black and white tile in their lodges. Uh, so that's why, you know, you'll, you'll often see red on black and white. Uh, also to note here, oh, also purple means royalty. It means like you are like, a, you know, you're a prince of Satanism, princess of Satanism. You are a high priestess witch, high priestess wizard, warlock, so on and so forth. Like that's what that means. So look out for purple too, you guys. Um, so this here uh, struck me because it looks like blood streaks on his, it might be like dried dirt or something like that, but um, we definitely have the sacrificial color. He looks like he's been through it. And this is one eye symbolism. You can still see his eye back there, like right there. You can still see it. Um, <laughs> I just can't. Um, and so let me show y'all something. Okay. Oh, regular photo. You think it was a regular photo? You would think. Um, I zoomed in here and that it's a goat. That it looks like the Baphomet on that looks like a goat. Um, you know, and it's not beyond me that it's right above his privates, uh, you know, his, his, uh, sexual organs belong to the satanic elite. He has to do the rituals, he has to do the sacrifices, he has to do that stuff. Behind closed doors, he is miserable. <laughs> I accidentally drew on this page, I didn't know how to do this until, like, just now, so. You know, there we go. One eye symbolism once again does not get any more obvious than that. And we have the red sacrificial color. You know? What do you know? So let's get into some um some videos, shall we? Is this focused? Is this is this focused? Wanna what? That's folks is gonna get. <laughs> okay, so yes. First of all, how cute is my desktop? Like, look at these little pearl icon. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> she's so cute. I love Y'all, I love Steven Universe. Okay, anyways. So, just to give us some background about Taming, let's let's get ourselves in this headspace, okay? Taming was 10 years old. 10 years old. 10 years old when he auditioned, and just look at how talented he is. Like, you guys, this guy, ah, uh, he's just so good, you guys. I love him so much. Um, you know, he, he, um, he got into SM really, really young and, you know, y'all might not want to admit this to yourselves, but pedophilia is just rampant. Um, anywhere where there's children, anyone, anywhere where there's a lot of children with a lot of money on the line, a lot of fame on the line, pedophilia is just almost inevitable in the world that we live in. Um, and so Taemin was in there with the sharks, with the wolves at the age of 10, separated from, you know, not spending that much time with his parents, separated from his family at a very early age and spending a lot of time with adults, with strangers, every second of every single day with his handlers, his managers. Um, and you know, 
that will do something on the psyche. Growing up, being told what to do, being told what's right, being told what's wrong, um, being brainwashed into your um, your main uh, worth is how good of a performer you are. And that's where your worth is coming from because you're fighting for those spots in that S in that new SM boy group. And and so for Taemin, he had to grow up with this mentality where his worth was how good of a performer he was and how much he could perform and how much he could dance and sing and you know be up there and be a star since the age of 10. Okay. He debuted at the age of 16. That's young, okay? I was a dummy at 16. I was, there's so much I didn't know at that age. And he was in there, in the spotlight, um, you know, all eyes on him. And um, just remember that while we're doing this decode, that he is someone, um, you know, he has so much talent, but in his world, that is, that really is kind of where his identity starts and ends for him when you are brainwashed in this system. Um, uh, and that's hard. <laughs> that's really difficult. Oh, geez, this is just so, okay. So look at this Taming Criminal music video, all right? Okay, first of all, just open up, but we're in hell. We're already in hell. <laughs> just to start, we're in hell. Um, we have the Freemason columns already there. Um, you know, black and white. Here's black and white on Freemason colors. Like you guys, it doesn't get any more clear than that. We have handcuffs because he is a slave, because he is a slave. One eye symbol. That's one eye symbolism. I know that it doesn't quite look like it. Boom. Right there. One eye symbolism. See how they like highlight the one eye like that? Okay. So then we have the TV playing. That is the MK Ultra programming. That is because what they do a lot, kind of like um, kind of like the film Clockwork Orange, is they they brainwash you with repetition and they play like they play like television programming that just like repeats things over and over and over again while they torture you um, while you're in those MK Ultra chairs. So yes, MK Ultra on the black and white tile on the floor. Okay, clock that. Okay, so mannequins, when you see mannequins, that also represents MK Ultra like dolls um, because taming in the music industry, in the K-pop industry, he's nothing more than a doll. Something that, you know, his controllers and his handlers play with. He's a plaything to them. He's someone who they wind him up, they put him out in front of the world, and he makes them money. He's just a thing to them. Uh, and so, you know, we have he's in a mannequin shop mannequins, dolls, that that symbolism is there, you guys. Um, <laughs> one eye symbolism, again, he's wearing black and white. So here we have the black, the white, and the red. One eye symbolism again. You guys, like, this music video is horrible. It's, like, so blatantly of uh, satanic symbolism. And we have the cracked window uh, representing the the the, uh, the the shattered glass is like the MK Ultra altars, um, and you see this a lot in a lot of other examples. You know, I'll throw in some other examples here and there because uh, I really want you all to understand this. Um, and so, not only is there the shattered glass, uh, but there's also the shattered glass covering up the one eye. Um, so we had the red symbolism there as well, and that is also the sacrificial color. Uh, you know, hell, we're in hell again. And he's wearing the one eye patch for like the one eye symbolism once again. Like you guys, like this one. Oh my God. And I think it like makes me really emotional because I just like, it's like 
this music video is so it's so covered in satanic symbolism and it's so obvious that he's a slave um and he's at the behest of his controllers and yet he's so talented he's so talented and he's just like he was it's almost like he was born to perform like he was born for this and it's like it's very like it's very mixed emotions for me like uh someone just like he's just so beautiful he's such like a like just like he's just such a good performer he's literally like i look up to him so much as a dancer and it's like and he's just is stuck in the system because you know this is where all his talents lie and this is where he wants to express himself and it's like he has to do uh these rituals in order to share his like sensational gift with the world and like that breaks my heart um okay uh you know it's so obvious i don't know <laughs> um and also i would like to note that he is very hyper sexualized uh he always has like stuff like uh, he always has like shirtless stuff, backless stuff, see-through stuff, and I think it's because he is a sex slave. Like I think he's an SM sex slave. I think he is a, um, uh, you know, uh, an elite sex slave in the K-pop industry. I think that Lee Su Mon and him are having an affair. <laughs> I know that's very outlandish for me to say, but. He's just so sexualized. It's like, um, it's like, I feel like a lot of his work is kind of like an ad for his, for people who want to bid for him. Like, this is, like, this is like some, like, you know, like, this is like some dude's fantasy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels a little voyeuristic. Some of his, some of his, uh, music videos feel very voyeuristic. <sighs> I'm only 25 seconds in this video, oh my lord, okay. One eye symbolism again. <laughs> I can't catch a break. <laughs> uh, you know, this I, I want to talk about. So, it's this particular scene right here where the, the red cloak crawls up him and comes onto his face like that. Um, and so, that you know stuff like that like i want y'all to realize like these people are conjuring demons i don't know how else to put it they're conjuring demons um they're conjuring entities uh stuff like that and um there are demons that can literally do that um like i know they just reversed the video um but you know it, it represents like the supernatural like kind of stuff that's impossible Demons can make the impossible happen, um, and so they, that's why they're kind of making, like, this, like, demons are what makes magic, and so they're showing magic, if that makes any sense. Oh, jeez. So, the lyrics, I know well that you're bad for me, you know, he knows that the demon, that the devil is bad, he knows that he's making deals with the devil, and yet it's all that he can do. Uh, you know, e Lord, I try to get away from you, but being brainwashed, all I can do is not. He's telling y'all that he's under MK Ultra brainwash. It's coming out of his own mouth. When the when when these people say this stuff, they're not lying. Like, they're not lying, you guys. Like, they are telling you what they're doing. He said, I am brainwashed. I know that what I'm doing is wrong, but all I can do is not because I am brainwashed. I don't know how much clearer it can be than that. Like, they literally tell you, and yet people think that, you know, I'm Looney Tunes. I ain't Looney Tunes, mamas. I, I know how to listen. God, I hope my... I hope my microphone isn't peaking. <sighs> so, I don't hate how your words make my feet entangled and dance. So, when he says that, uh, you know, 
they're conjuring demons and these demons are sometimes um, taking over them when they perform. So sometimes they make deals with demons so the demons are uh, their alter ego that performs for them when they're on stage. Uh, you know, even the dancers have their one eye symbolism masks in there. Uh, he says, because I don't want to deny the truth that it was destined to be you from the beginning. So people think that he's talking about a girl or he's talking about someone he loves. No, mm -mm. Uh -uh. nope, he's talking about he's talking about the devil. And that's just what it comes down to. He's talking about the devil. Uh, he says, oh, I'm on a leash called you. The devil owns him. The devil has him on a leash. Okay? I can't. And he's just so good, y'all. Oh, my God. He says, you know, it's painful. And this is the criminal that destroys me. And uh, the devil is a criminal. The devil is a criminal. I want to talk about this. Let me show you guys what this is. Um, so this right here, he says, oh, but I'm only getting dragged in more deeply. You know, the devil just asks for more. You think that you make one sacrifice, you do one ritual, you do one more, you do one more, and you think that's going to be it. No, you have to keep on doing it. Um, and you just get deeper and deeper and deeper into the occult before, before you know it, you know, you're, there's no turning back. Um, and so look here, he's standing over a maze here, okay? So you need to look out for maze symbolism because what happens when you're um, under MK Ultra and your personality split and you're under mind control, your mind feels like a maze and you feel like you can get lost in the maze. Oh, maybe that's why he had that lost tattoo. But you feel like you can get lost in the maze. And so you need to look for that maze symbolism um, very much like the symbolism in the uh exo overdose video they're an maze in that video and there's and they have a satanic cube in that video as well that you also gotta look out for um and so you know he's it's literally like a one eye symbolism a second like literally you can pause at any moment and there's like one eye symbolism um so here he is uh, a statue um, you know, more like kind of like doll, puppet, uh, mannequin kind of symbolism. He's nothing more than just something someone, you know, puts up and poses and sells. Um, it's pretty brutal. We have our black and white outfit again, you know, and the chains representing slavery. God, he's just so good. Like you guys. He's so, he's so talented. It like rocks my world. Um, uh, oh God, this is like so creepy. So the hands creeping out on along the walls represents his MK Ultra handlers. So there's a lot of hand symbolism when it comes to uh, MK Ultra, like just people grabbing, touching and stuff like that in photos. Uh, it just represents the handlers, the people always touching them. Uh, people just like while they're being put under the uh brainwash uh even even Britney Spears when she had her infamous breakdown where she shaved her head she said I'm sick of people touching me I'm sick of people touching me and like she just kept talking about how people were always touching her yeah she's an MK Ultra victim like through and through that's like if you want to learn about MK Ultra, that's the best case study because her breakdown was just so clear as day Black and white with, that's kind of orangey, but you know, red, red sacrificial colors, one eye symbolism, yeah, nothing new. We have the black and white with the red. So look, blindfolds are also a part of their satanic rituals. Um, you know, I think Pink had like a famous like a Masonic blindfold ritual in somewhere or whatever, but, but, uh, but yeah. The blindfolds are a really big part of their rituals um, and it's red so these people with the one eyes they represent Taemin's handlers 
uh oh god it's like see like black white red black white red black white red it's so obvious it's so obvious see these are literally his handlers these people holding him um tarot cards occult symbolism uh they so they don't really use tarot cards in their rituals but their rituals are descendants are are like does descend from um ancient hermeticism and the hermetic tarot is one of the most famous tarot decks so that should be noted more you know death freaking it's just like <laughs> it's it's just like everywhere and there's roses flowers okay let's look at this so we have suffocation which is a uh, which is usually used in MK Ultra. Just to clarify, for anyone who doesn't know, MK Ultra is a process of brainwash. Uh, it is the process of separating personalities through torture. So they torture their subjects um, before their subjects break down so much that they can literally just tell them tell them to do whatever they want, and then they will. And so suffocation is a part of that. Okay, and so here we see the suffocation here and we see the butterfly symbolism here butterfly symbolism is a really big part of mk ultra because once you're under mk it feels like you're floating you're floating like a butterfly they tie you up uh, on those torture things hand hand foot foot like you're sprawled out like a butterfly so that's why butterflies are so prevalent in their symbolism um and notice the mannequin heads in the background and there's lots of flowers Roses. Roses represent adrenochrome and adrenochrome gives you, um, it is baby's blood, uh, tortured baby's blood, uh, that gives you, um, like a high and the high, um, is, is a part of the dissociation process. So they'll usually make you take adrenochrome while they're torturing you to put you under brainwash, under mind control. Yep. Yep. Everything's there. I I think that's everything and there's um, not much not much else really for me to cover um, so yeah this is in part one <laughs> this is only one video you guys and it was just so overwhelming and this is a big reason why I just could not do this video but I didn't want to do any other video besides a taming video um, but this is sad dude this is sad for me like I cannot do this um, just seeing him just being tortured like that is just really difficult for me um being as i am a huge Tamin fan uh and i just see how much talent he has and it's like yeah it gets me very emotional um that being said i absolutely love this album <laughs> it was so good it was so good and yes i know the album has probably a ton of back masking and like a ton of like satanic like subliminals but it's just like that's my that's my boy you know that's my guy okay and so now let's go through idea okay so i don't have much to say about this i don't but um one eye symbolism right there but because it, this is a lot more subtle now, going through this video, um, you know, it's not nearly as much. We have some, uh, we have some black and white and red symbolism here. Um, but what I do want to talk about is his purple jacket. So the purple represents royalty, and that is why Prince uh, was always he always had purple around him because he did enough um rituals where he was kind of royalty level royalty status um in the satanic elite you know and so that's where Tamin is Tamin is one of their best pawns right now he is just everyone loves Tamin like you can't everybody loves Tamin everybody respects the hell out of the guy and he's just awesome I love him um and so that's what the purple represents the purple represents uh 
it, it represents kind of an elevation in the ranks. So he, right now, I do think in SM that he is the most elevated male performer. Uh, let me talk about, okay, so this woods symbolism with the red, with the satanic color, they do a lot of their um, rituals kind of like in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And so I did find this a little bit interesting. Um, but yeah, while watching, you know, black and white once again, but watching this whole thing, I was kind of like, you know, it's not nearly as blatant as the last video. It seemed pretty tame to me. Um, but then I saw these stairs and the stairs going up to heaven. He says, your shadow I finally found at that moment when I've become to trust everything invisible, I throw myself into the ideal. When the blue light flowing on me faces you and me, all the colored emotions inside become the unlimited range, the brightest presence in my world, the absolute value, you. Okay, he is saying, you, the devil, you are now my thoughts. You are my ideas. You are, you rule me and you know, Everything has been leading up to you and it's all about you. It's all about the devil. And I and I wasn't quite convinced until until I continued to watch this and lightning. Lightning. Right here. Lightning. That's what you want, you guys. The lightning it was a dead giveaway. Now, anyone who's read the Bible, who knows of the Bible's parables, knows that Satan was once an angel. Lucifer was an angel created by God, and he used to be up in heaven. But as he turned against God, God cast him down from heaven, and Lucifer fell from heaven, and he fell in a lightning bolt. So when you see lightning bolt sim symbolism, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about satan and how he fell from heaven and so when he's talking about i found you i found you like you everything you you he's talking about satan and this lightning that's satan's lightning you know and ugh, it's very interesting to me how he switches from this kind of godly look to like this devilish figure he looks possessed first of all First of all, homie looks possessed. I would not be surprised if this one, I can't even, oh my God, I can't even look at that. He looks possessed, first of all. Second of all, I'm sure this is one of his altars. Um, and you see he's like in like this little jail area cause like that's what it's about. You're constantly under surveillance as a K-pop idol. Um, but yeah, freaky, I can't. Anyways, the song's good as, it's good as hell. And I'm, I'm saying good as hell because it is a hellish, it is a song of hell. It's so, it's so bad. It's so bad. Um, but whatever. It's good. It's good. You, hey, 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 you are my messiah. That was when I was like, oh. I don't know who they talking about. They talk about the devil. They talk about the devil and only the devil. Okay. You are my messiah. They're talking about how the devil is their messiah because Satanists, the devil is their messiah. They think the devil is just the best thing, the bees knees and the devil give them anything they want, but they don't understand the devil that you work for the devil, baby. And one of these days you're going to have to pay the greatest price ever. And your soul is tainted. And you know, as you are accumulating a lot of karmic debt, babe, and in the next life, you're gonna have to pay for that. And that's gonna suck for you. Or you're gonna go to hell. I don't know. You know, Buddhists actually believe in hell. We believe it's one of the realms you can reincarnate into, but some people can actually reincarnate out of hell. I don't know. Actually, I, I do know, but like, I just don't feel like explaining right now. Um, so yeah, that's just where I'm gonna stop the Tame and Decode. Um, Actually, no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, let me show y'all something, okay? 
So Lee Soo Man prepared rings for Super M. But when Taemin chose one, he picked Lee Soo Man's ring. So first of all, I find it weird that he's like giving rings to Super M. It's kind of like, oh, he's kind of like, oh, he's like he's the pimp and he's like, the, them his bitches. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it kind of feels like. Mm, but um, it is kind of weird that like Taemin owns one of Lee Soo Man's rings. Like, it kind of feels like gift you give to your mistress. No, I'm, I'm like reaching high key. Uh, <laughs> I'm reaching, but um, but hey, you know, that's how the music industry rolls. That's how they be rolling. So, I hope you liked this well overdue decode, and I also hope that my audio was really cute today, because I got like all new gear for you guys, I got new audio, I got an iPad, I got all kinds of stuff, so hopefully I could be like a lot more productive. I've just been very emotional about this taping thing. Um, and about the pandemic in general, but I can make some more like pandemic videos and stuff uh, So I can like update y'all and like what y'all should kind of be preparing for because it's about to be a shit show. So Yeah, make sure you subscribe. So <laughs> that hopefully I can give you some advice pre shit show uh, I'll catch you later and you know send this to a friend if you want to wake them up and please subscribe so that I could like one day post community posts one of these days like that's my goal and yeah okay bye catch y'all on the flippity flop <laughs>